Well, how's everybody doing? Hey, uh, sorry I haven't posted in a while. Been really, really busy with work. Um, and Randy, as is so often the, is the case, is out of town on business. So haven't been able to get up to layout. But uh, hoping to get up to the layout in the not too distant future. Um, probably the final weekend of uh, here in September I'll be getting up there. But hey, just wanted to kind of give everybody an update. Uh, even though I haven't been posting, I haven't had a chance to post. It's not that I haven't been uh, working on things. Um, wanted to, before I get into this one real quick, just wanted to show you what I've been working on and what I've been doing. Um, everybody that follows the channel knows knows Randy's love of, of switchers. So uh, there was recently, oh, I say recently, it's probably been a couple months now, but there was an MTH warehouse sale. Um, I think it was back, uh, maybe it was early, early in, it was, I think it was early in August. It was very late in July or early in August. And, uh, there was a real mongrel on there, this guy, um, <laughs> which was a mishmash of parts, some painted, some not, none of them matching. Um, but Randy loves switchers. So I let him know about it. And he said, Hey man, if you could get it for a solid price, I'd, I'd be, uh, I'd be in on that one. So I bid on it and actually ended up winning it for him. And I'll put a picture of what this thing looked like. Um, when it showed up, it was missing parts. And, uh, um, like I said, was a mishmash of, of, uh, <laughs> of paint schemes. Um, always roll the dice when you buy something from those MTH warehouse sales, whether or not it'll be functional. And, and in our case, fortunately, this one was. It's got some time and mileage on the clock, so I'm not sure if the board was a warranty repair, where it came from, what the deal was, but it works just great. If you remember, uh, I'll put the link to the, the, um, to the unboxing. When I first opened this one up, I heard some stuff rattling around inside, so I didn't want to fire it up um, and run it just for fear that something might short the board or smoke the board. And when I opened it up, it was just a bunch of loose parts. One of the light bulbs had come loose, was rattling around in there, cleaned everything up. Everything was present. Did have to, uh, it was missing these front handrails on either side. And at the time, MTH did not have these in stock, or at least I, at least I couldn't find them on the parts where, uh, website. So I got some um, AS616 front handrails and have modified them. But as I looked again this morning for some other parts, they now have these on, on, on the website available. So I haven't permanently glued these in because they're not quite the right size. Um, I had to snip them down to size, solder them together. Um, so a lot of work went into these guys and I'm just gonna end up taking them off uh, and ordering the, the proper ones. I think the ones they have in stock are yellow, so I'll have to paint them black. But but in any case, uh, Randy loves DT&I. He loves that orange paint scheme of the DT&I. So he thought this would look cool as a DT&I switcher. Um, this is an SW8 MTH Protosound 2. It's a Rail King model. Um, I can't find any history. I don't think the DT&I ever rostered any SW8s, but they did have um, some other switchers, some older NW units, and I believe some SW7s, very similar to an SW8. Um, they had a really cool embossed, like raised, uh, dt and I logo on the side that I, I can't replicate unless I pay somebody a lot of money to to make a raised emblem. So Microscale had a uh, a diesel detailing a diesel decal set for um, dt and I hood units. So went ahead and bought that and just you know kind of used that to represent um, the dt and I logo uh, on the sides. But what I did with this one painted it up. Um, I did not have any DT&I specific uh, orange paint, but we knew we were uh, gonna weather this one lightly. Uh, and it's not heavily weathered. It might look a little he more heavily weathered and uh, faded on camera than it really is. Um, I think it has just just the right amount of weathering and, and sort of just, you know, that little bit of wear that you'd find on a yard unit. Not a lot of, um, these things tend when they stick around the yards and don't go on the main line, they don't get that mud and, and, and dust kick up the way the, 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 the main line units do, but they tend just to get faded out and kind of 
kind of dirty. So what we did, uh, I faded the top down and, and, and put some, you know, just uh, dirt and exhaust marks around, uh, obviously, the the, uh, the venting, the, where the intakes on the front is and where the cooling vents on the rear are. And then I put the decals on. Um, still have to put the little, you know, F. I forgot to put those on, and I have them on. I'll, I'll get them mounted at some time here in the very near future, but I just have to put the... Uh, the forward reporting mark, you know, that the little F means front. Uh, I forgot to put those on, but um, let, just kept this as number 126, which was the number that was on it. I think this was a Chicago and Northwestern um, paint scheme. Um, didn't do a complete strip down on this one, simply because the windows, the glass inside the cab, you cannot get this stuff out. It's like... Uh, the cab, the glass goes into the cab and then they, they mount the cab on the body. And it's it's not something that I felt comfortable trying to get apart. It just really felt like it would break. So with the with the glass and everything um, still in there, I didn't want to uh, do a full strip like I normally would uh, in 91% alcohol overnight. So what I actually did was I was able to get the Chicago Northwestern decals off of this side um, very easily they were pretty old and worn so they came off very easily there was a 126 a painted 126 over here and what i did was i used some 91 and then a little bit of 2000 grit sandpaper to take that down smooth there was a couple little areas where um, if i recall this guy was dark green on top and along this railing it was yellow down below and i'll put the, again the picture on there but had a little mark over here. I sanded that down, got it as smooth as I possibly could to try to eliminate any bleed through. Again, knowing that I was going to weather it, which should minimize the look of that stuff. And if I catch it in just the right light, I can tell where that where that was. But I don't think anybody else is going to. Um, but really, you know, just kind of dusted the lower the lower side frames and frame of the unit and the pilots. The pilots were unpainted, so I painted those. Just did some light weathering around places where you'd get some, you know, um, some dust and debris moving through vents and things like that. Um, one little disappointment was uh, on this rear number board. When I took the tape off of it, it actually pulled the pulled the numbering off a little bit. You probably can't see it on the camera. That number board doesn't have a number on it anymore. A little bit disappointing, but... Um, I guess not the end of the world. If I come across some white decals with really, really tiny numbers, maybe, maybe I'll try and uh, maybe I'll try and do that for the Rand Man. But again, these guys are still loose because these um, aren't the exact right. The stanchions themselves, the holes for the stanchions are a little bit bigger than the the bases of the stanchions. But again, I ordered two new ones uh, for either of these front sides, so these will be coming off. And I'll put the once once I put the right ones on those. If I if I'm not mistaken, those are just press fit in. They're just a compression fit, uh, and we'll go from there. But but yeah, cool little switcher, cool little uh, SW8 and DT9 that uh, we'll get on the layout here. Randy's out of town on business, but uh, the next time I make a run up to Cleveland, I'll make sure to. Um, to get that on the layout. Hey, the other one that I'm working on, I, I, I bought this from a, a, a friend of mine, a person I consider a friend. Uh, I mean, just through the uh, through the uh, through the hobby, we we've we've bought and sold a few things uh, between each other. He lives out in New Jersey, so never met him before. But um, he had this one. He, he advertised this one on Facebook Marketplace, and I saw it. And he had it advertised pretty cheap, and um. To my my guess is that this one took a nosedive off of somebody's layout because the front door was broken and there is a crack in the shell right there. And then when I got it, uh, it had a bunch of loose stuff rattling around inside. Um, the handrails up front were kind of mangled and this piece right here had had a previous repair and it a second I, I touched the handrail, it came off. So that's uh, been super glued back on. Some of these tabs underneath in the shell itself, specifically these two back here and then the one up front right here. So, you know, you got these two back tabs and this one up front, they are broken. So the body wanted to pull away from the shell, the body wanted to pull away from the walkways. So 
Um, I put a little bit of um, testers motto glue in there just to um, just to kind of tack it up overnight. And then I came back in with some gel super glue after it all had cured and was a little harder. I came back in with some gel super glue and put that in the seam. Um, and now it's 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 as snug as it, it's snugger than it should be because these are typically only held in by these tabs. Um, up front, I glued in the door and the glue must have expanded when it dried because it op the door opened a little bit. So um, I'm a little bit OCD. I'm probably I'm probably going to have to kind of cut that out with an X-Acto knife and. Uh, Snug that up a little bit better. Strangely, this door, um, you can see where the hinges have broken right here. It really, it just wants to fall inside the cab. So what I did, I've got some, just some, some blue painter's tape. Kind of, I put that in there as sort of a backing so that while it was drying, it would uh, stay snug. And like I said, the darn thing, the glue must have expanded as it dries, which it sometimes does. Um, either that or the tape pushed it out, but it's in there solid, but I, I don't know. I don't really like that look. I don't like that big gap. So I might have to fix that. Um, I'm gonna weather this guy up, the reason it's apart. Now, I got it on the track last night, pretty cool. Has a BCR in it already, so pretty happy. This is a five volt. Um, MTH has it labeled as an AC4400. Um, kind of interesting because this is a Dash 9 shell. You can tell it's a Dash 9 because it's got the, it doesn't have the, the very large uh, AC inverter box right here. So this would be a Dash 9 in real life the way it looks. Um, this specific unit, 9546, did exist on the Canadian Pacific. It was an AC4400. I think they call it an uh, an AC 44 CW. I think that's what Canadian Pacific calls it, but, um, it's been rebuilt as an AC 44 C six M. Um, so the number, the road number has gone to an 8,000 series number, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to treat this like it, uh, even though it's like I said, a dash nine over here, uh, the dash nine and the AC 4400, really the only difference is the inverters, the type of traction motors it has. So we'll just uh, we'll just roll with this guy being a uh, being a dash nine, even though it was an AC forty four hundred. But um, there's some nice pictures online um, of this one. Um, so I do plan to weather this one up pretty good. Uh, there's no way without weathering it that I'm ever going to be able to hide this this crack in the nose right here. Um, the crack itself doesn't concern me terribly. It it does go through the shell, but. Like I said, this guy took a spill. <laughs> There's no doubt it fell off of somebody's table. Um, but I uh, I hooked it up, I dropped it into the controller and um, I think it has about 130 or 140 miles on it, so not terrible. Um, no real dust to speak of on it. It's gonna paint up and weather up really nice. This guy got pretty darn crusty uh, as, as, the, as the locomotives that run up in Canada typically do got pretty darn crusty before it got re, um, rebuilt as the C6M. So it's my intention to weather this one. I'm going to start working on weathering it. Um, and I'll kind of show you what the finished product is. I'm going to, I've been kind of looking for, for the inspiration. Um, on, I like to go to railroadpicturearchives.net and, uh, the one thing that I'm having a hard time discerning, and maybe if you know, if you are in the know, because Canadian Pacific is not um, one of the primary roads that I model. I do love this paint scheme. I think it's a cool paint scheme. These do, do roll through Cleveland with some frequency, um, but I never see these down here in Columbus, ever. Like, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a... I don't think I've ever seen one of these this far south. They, they do roll through Cleveland, though. Um, but because I don't see them that frequently, I, I can't really tell from the pictures, and maybe I just need to dig into some other ones to see when they were brand new, because um, these things get so dirty so fast. So obviously, the handrails um, on these guys, MTH has them black, which in this point of time, they were still doing a lot of black handrails on everything. 
But if you look at the front and the rear, they're red. Um, I can't tell from the pictures. I can tell that the side stanchions are red, but I can't tell if the handrails were black um, or if they were just painted red. It seems to me that the actual long handrail was black, but the stanchions were red. So if anybody knows the answer to that, um, please let me know. As of now, I'm leaning towards painting all the stanchions in this underpiece here red, um, but leaving the actual hand uh, long handrail itself black. Uh, someone, please let me know if you have uh, if you're in the know if you're if you're a fan of Canadian Pacific or if you're around these guys with some frequency and have you know see them when they're new, newish. Now again, this is. This is being painted in the older paint scheme. So I don't know what they're doing nowadays might be slightly different, but I'm talking about, you know, this thing hit the rails uh, in early 2000. Um, that's what my intention is, but just wanted to give a quick update. Um, I'm gonna probably start doing some, some prep work on this guy. Uh, gotta work a little bit later today, so. And then uh, this evening, this is Monday. Uh, Monday, what, September, what is it, September 18th today or something like that? Um, the Browns and Steelers play tonight on Monday Night Football. So I, that's a game that I usually try to watch every year, you know, twice a year. Uh, usually doesn't go so well for my Browns, but who knows? Maybe this is, maybe this is the year that, uh, that we, uh, we, we get the Steelers in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I think we haven't... We, well, the Browns beat them in the playoffs a couple seasons ago. Um, but uh, in the regular season, I don't think the Browns have won in Pittsburgh since like 2003. It's pretty gross. But, uh, hey, you know, hope rings eternal when you're a Browns fan. In any case, hey, just, just a quick update on the channel, guys. I hope everybody's having a great, uh, a great day and has gotten off to a great start. Uh, let me know what you think about the little DT&I switcher. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, who knows? We, uh, I have a, a, a project locomotive that I'm working on. I like the way this one turned out so much that I just might paint that thing into DT&I as well. I think it would look cool to have two of them running back to back. I uh, got a bunch of other projects in the works too. Um, so as I get, as I move on to those, I'll, I'll bring you guys up to speed. But I think uh, the next couple, uh, the next couple vids will be. Uh, not couple. I'll do a vid on this one, maybe showing some of the progress and, and completion of it. And hopefully we'll get it up on the on the layout. Randy's got an AC4400 dummy and I got an SD90 Mac um, Canadian Pacific. I think they'll look really cool running together. In any case, hey, appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes to stop by and, and, and uh, visit with us here at the channel. Hope everybody's having a great day. Happy railroading, everybody. Take care. Oh, 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 oh,